In today's video, we'll be discussing the key market moving factor of the week, PCE, which comes tomorrow morning. I'll get you prepped on that. We'll also talk about some of the recent crazy market moves. We're seeing stocks down, commodities up, and Bitcoin flying to the moon finally. So here's a quick market overview as we start. You can see stocks lower here this morning, the dollar pushing up, the euro and pound kind of mixed, but overall trending down, it seems. And at the same time, you do have the good old gold and oil rally seems to be finding its legs. And here's a quick look at the Bitcoin chart. And I know we don't cover it too often on this channel. Channel, but I thought it was a sign of the times. It seems like optimism, as crazy as it may sound, may be really back, even though there's some really tough things going on in the world. There's cost of living crisis, Middle East, Ukraine. It's weird because we're still also seeing a lot of risk on assets flying high, like Bitcoin, which as we go into PCE is an interesting indicator. It usually moves up on cooling inflation. So watch Bitcoin tomorrow if you're somebody who's in the crypto world. It could be interesting, but we are breaking 60,000 at the time of recording this, which which is a remarkable recovery from its lows of 2022, uh, you know, back down as close to 15, 16,000 uh, per, per coin. Kind of crazy to see that huge monster push. And it seems like this rally is potentially getting fueled by good old fashioned FOMO. This seems to be the case every time crypto goes crazy, everybody starts wanting to chase the thing and uh, that just perpetuates it higher until it all comes falling back down. But the question is, is it gonna finally reach that fabled 100K mark that everybody always talked about for the last, you know, half a decade, everybody's saying 100K. We'll have to keep an eye on it. And I will also just mention, I have a small position on it myself. I'll show you that. So for my crypto friends, you may remember that recently we saw ETFs come out for Bitcoin. This is the IBIT, it's the iShares Bitcoin Trust. Basically holds Bitcoin on your behalf. I actually bought some, not initially, but after it pulled back and kind of the dust settled from that news, I picked up a small position because I've been in the belief this year that we're entering into kind of the next wave of a bigger, broader bull market in terms of the stock world. So I picked up a really small position, but even though it's really small, it's still up almost $1,000 on what is, I think it's at the start is like a $2,750 position. So really, really small in my personal portfolio. I know it's not a small amount of money, but um, the account that I'm on is, is larger and that's a tiny penny sized position in the account. And yet still it's making substantial moves here and uh, I plan on holding it. I, I, I will basically, if this thing comes all the way back, I'll just take break even, but otherwise I'm gonna try and see if I can let it run, see what Bitcoin does. Here's a look at the gold price. You can see we are currently still basically chopping around, but slightly in the green on the trade alert that I shared here a few days back and uh, covered on my channel. My thought process with gold on the daily chart is that I do think we will probably head back up to retest this 2055 an ounce level at some point. Um, and I've also mentioned that this is a really small position for me. So I bought the GLD ETF as a US client. I can't trade CFDs like XAU USD. So instead I trade ETF variations. You could also do the futures version if you prefer, but I just like ETFs. So anyways, I bought GLD and uh, we're up a very small amount. I have mentioned also though, that if you're watching the spot gold price, what I am looking for is a break of this 2060 level. If we see that happen. So let's just say we get some momentum going. I like to trade momentum moving markets markets anyways. I'll probably add more to my trade on gold if we actually start to get a breakout through that 2060 level. That's kind of my soft game plan. I will also stop out if we fail to hold levels of support around 2015 an ounce. And if you've kept up with me recently, you know I've had a couple struggles on trying to, to pick out good setups and I've, I've been a bit of a drawdown here recently, but that drawdown has come to a close with this oil position. This trade has been a huge winner and I, and I added context to this in my recent videos, but I tried once, I tried twice, both of them were poor entries for me and I ended up taking a small loss on the first trade. I took a bit more size in the second one, took a loss on that one. And then my third entry here off of this support holding has been a phenomenal winner here. And uh, at this point is a several times my initial risk return so far. Um, I'll show you, I've got my stop loss trail you can see on the right hand side of the screen, but USO, this is where I have the position. We are up 6,500 bucks on this trade which is a pretty big mover here for the account. Um, 
uh, and again, uh, just, just basically took me a couple attempts, but did finally get the full size and the full entry that I really wanted on oil. And you may wonder why oil, why gold, and why now? Well, we got bullish readings going into this week from the Edge Finders algorithm. This algorithm considers things like the commitment of traders data, retail positioning, seasonality, trend, economic factors like PMI, retail sales, etc., inflation, labor statistics, and interest rates. It looks at all these things, it tallies them up, it pulls all the data in automatically, considers it, and generates bullish and bearish ideas. So right now, commodities really came up strong on the Edge Finders output table going into this week. I like the technical setup, I put on my, my trade based on the technicals as well, and so far we're off to the races. Let's see if I can keep going. While we're on the top setups page, we can also take a look at some of the more bearish reads. You can see a lot of Australian dollar currency pairs getting not so much love from the Edge Finder, uh, a lot of COT data showing bearishness as well as some of the other factors that we watch. We can also flip it around if you have the edge finder. This is a cool trick. Just clip, uh, just just sort by score and flip it around here, and you can see kind of the thought process, the the reasoning behind these uh, uh, generated scores. You can go along the list and see what may or may not be bullish or bearish for each thing. Also, if you like the tools that I'm using in my videos to analyze the markets, we do offer 30 days access. If you'd like some information about that, you can fill out the application form down below in the description, get a trial of our software, check out what all the hype is about. We have many people from all over the world using this and we have awesome reviews all over the website as well as uh, you know on our Trustpilot, et cetera. So um, a lot of traders have been using this to better enhance their trading by looking at more data quicker. So if this would be helpful to you, consider Consider applying for a trial down below in the description. The put call ratio measures the volume of puts versus calls in the stock market. And this is an interesting indicator, even if you don't trade indices, because it kind of tells you sentiment. And when this gets very far to the downside, markets are very bullish. And when this gets higher, uh, that tells you that, again, sentiment is more bearish. And this put call ratio, you can read this if you'd like. Uh, in fact, maybe Chandler, if you could zoom in to this text and you guys can pause the video if you'd like to read more about it. So feel free to do that. Um, if this gets more in the middle, that's generally a kind of a mixed neutral stance. So we're more close to the middle of this right now. So I also wanted to take a second to prepare for tomorrow's PCE number. Now what we're looking at is the CPI number. And you might say, well, what's the difference? Well, the consumer price index and the PCE number, these two are both measurements of inflation. However, the Federal Reserve typically prefers the PCE. The PCE number stands for personal consumption expenditure, and it's the primary measure of consumer spending on goods and services in the U.S. economy. It accounts for about two-thirds of domestic final spending, and thus it is the primary engine that drives future economic growth. Long story short, it tracks real consumer prices that people kind of every day rely on. And the health of the consumer is very important to the U.S. economy as it is for any economy. Well, the CPI here has told an interesting story. We've seen inflation come down meaningfully towards the kind of mid-2023 levels, and then we sort of ramped back up, and now we've kind of stayed over all kind of flat. So tomorrow's inflationary number will be very important. If the Fed wants to cut rates, or if people want the Fed to cut rates, we need to start seeing some inflation momentum to the downside. We need to see a 2% overall CPI. That's kind of uh, where the Fed wants to go. And maybe not actually being at 2% is what the Fed needs, but they need to at least see momentum towards 2%, which we've kind of lacked in recent months with strong economic data. Tomorrow's number is really impactful if you trade gold, indices, et cetera, because if inflation comes out hot, if inflation, and I'm talking about PCE, if PCE comes in hot tomorrow, what happens to gold? What happens to stocks, right? If you get hot inflation tomorrow, gold probably actually comes down. Interest rate cuts are probably not coming for a little while and that could be uh, pushing things back further. It also could push down stocks, but stocks have been mixed and not really super reactive to inflationary numbers here recently. In fact, the last CPI, stocks dropped and then immediately popped back up. So that could be a mixed bag. But if you're watching gold, that could be interesting. If you're watching the DXY, the dollar index, hot PCE could be hot uh, for the dollar. And flip everything around, if we get cooler than expected PCE numbers, the dollar could come down, gold could shoot up, and stocks, again, could do whatever they want to do. Anyways, um, 
Overall, I'll be watching personally gold and oil, which I do have trades on. I'll also be interested in seeing what the stock market kind of deems. Recently, good news has been good news and bad news has been bad news. What I mean by that is hot inflation could start to, uh, you know, you might make the argument that well, that's bad news because the Fed's going to not cut rates. But the stock market may also just look at that and say, well, growth is still good and we're still going to cut rates at some point. So whatever. That's been kind of the vibe that the stock market has been giving. So something to think about there. And as I've been doing this recently in my video, I'll stick to the theme. Here's my current positions, everything from gold, oil, some puts that I've sold on a couple ETFs, my China position and my Bitcoin, silver and my dollar position. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering how you can trade with this broker, this is Weeble. It's what I personally trade it with as a US client. We're a bit limited in what we can trade here in the US. You could also go the futures option. But for me, I like trading ETFs. It's what I've done for many years and it's what I prefer. So if you'd like to trade uh, with Weeble, there's a link down below in the description. You get a bunch of shares for free if you sign up using that link. And if you're not in the US, there's also 8CAP and Oanda uh, that there are some links down below in the description as well for you. There's actually some great sign up perks. So if you're looking for a new broker and you'd like to get some sort of cool extra perk for doing so, consider checking out what's offered down below in the the description for those brokers. Please note those are referral links. If you use those, uh, you'll be supporting my channel um, and, and I'd very much appreciate it. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also, we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here, and we'll see you there.